Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Trail Talk. I'm so glad you could join us today on this rainy Wednesday here in Duncan, Oklahoma. I'm Edie, and we are live here at the Chisholm Trail Heritage Center. And um, for a very interesting guest today, I'd like to introduce you to Dylan Hendricks. Dylan is representing the uh, Duncan Noon Lions Club. And uh, so we're going to find out a little bit about the Lions Club and especially our local chapter and the kind of the way they support our community. But first, Dylan, uh, let's get to know you a little bit. Okay, absolutely. So um, are you from Duncan? I'm not. Uh, my, my wife and I have lived in the Duncan area for the last seven years now. Uh -huh. And and I've been a part of, of uh, First Bank and Trust now for a couple of years, uh, being here in Duncan, almost a couple of years. And uh, originally from the Ada area. Okay, so what what brought you to Duncan? Well, my my wife is she is from um, kind of northwest of Marlowe. You okay. know, her family lives there still, so we kind of moved uh, moved over this way, and that's how I got into banking, and uh, that's kind of what led us to one way or another to Duncan, Oklahoma. To Duncan, Oklahoma, very nice. And um, so you like Duncan? Just fine. love it, absolutely. There's a uh, you know, you get an opportunity to be in different places uh, in, in your career and in your lifetime. And and uh, I've, I think I've had the opportunity to be in enough places to, to know that Duncan is, is special. And when you hear somebody say that, that's that's from a, a location, from a community, it's like, OK, well, you know, everybody thinks that about their hometown. But right. but when somebody who's not from this area and that, that would be me, you know, coming in and saying there's something different about Duncan. And I think. Uh, I think that's uh, a special thing that right. Duncan is pretty special. Right. My husband and I were the same way. Neither of us grew up here, but we really are glad we raised our kids here where this is a good place to call home Absolutely. for us. So um, shout out to Duncan. That's right. Uh, so how long have you been a part of the Lions Club? So I've been a part of Lions Club International for six years now. Okay. Uh, I've been a part of the Duncan Noon chapter for uh, two years now since uh -huh. I since I moved to Duncan, uh, moved uh, to work out of Duncan. Right. And uh, yeah, so yeah, two years. So and, did you live in Ada before coming to Duncan, or another community? We've been in the area. I've just usually commuted. So I was I was in Chickasha. For okay, a couple in Chickasha. Years so in that was. Fire. Was that okay, Lawton? You said yes. so. You were in Lions Clubs in those other two communities in, in Chickasha. In Chickasha. In Chickasha. Yes. Okay, in the Chickasha. That's correct. Um, so that's that's kind of interesting. I'll probably come back to that um, in a minute. But um, so tell us tell us what it is about Lions Club. Well, no, let's go back. Let's let's go back to the beginning. Okay. of Lions Club. Okay, tell us kind of the history. Where where did it all begin? You bet. So it all began in in uh, Chicago, Illinois. A lot of the business leaders there in that community knew they wanted to um, organize a uh, some sort of social club um, that would, that had a purpose. Mm -hmm. And so they, I believe that was nineteen in the late nineteen ten, so like nineteen seventeen, right around there. Okay, they decided to uh, put this together, and then I go ahead and kind of transition into they had an annual conference not long after that and Helen Keller was one of the keynote speakers and she put out a challenge to the Lions Club and and uh, gave them a challenge to be what what she referred to as Knights of the Blind and so that was to to um, take on blindness uh, head on and that be our main focus and so that's what that's what we do today but it all started back in in the late 1900s, and and there's actually a couple of a uh, couple of uh, chapters in Oklahoma, not not in Duncan, but in Oklahoma that were part of the uh, founding chapters. Oh, really? Yes, wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Duncan, I mean Oklahoma wasn't very old back in those days, yeah. so I don't you think? I historically, I always think it's interesting how you know um, so long ago when it was really hard to communicate. I mean, people didn't realize how difficult it was. We look back now when, you know, we have the ability to do something that quick. <laughs> um, you know, I could talk to someone in Chicago on a text message right. just like that. Mm -hmm. But um, how does how does something like Alliance Club move to a place that's just so 
young, a state that's so young. And you know, does someone from Chicago move here? Did someone go visit relatives in Chicago and then come back to Oklahoma and say, you know, I, my my cousin did, is a part of this club and we're going to, I think we should start with, you know? Oh, yeah, no, I, I don't know. Interesting to think that's about great... how, how things like that moved around the country and started up and carried have been I mean that's that's over a hundred years now yep. that this club excuse me that this club has been um I don't know I say club but or organization and you said it's Lions Club International. That's right. So at this point we <laughs> we have I want to say I want to say 80 countries um it's wow. over 80 countries that um, Lion Club, Lions Club has a presence in. Mm -hmm. And so Lions Club does stand for, um, I'm to have to write it down, Liberty, Intelligence, Our Nation, Safety. And so that's how the name Okay, that's out. where so the that name came. Lions Club. Yeah. Okay, so it's, it's a, a, wait, what are those called? Acronym? It's an acronym. That's right. So it, acronyms always kind of make me laugh. It's like, did they think of the acronym first and they had to get the words? <laughs> Or did they write these words out and go, oh, look, if we arrange them like this, it spells lions. I mean, what would you do? I mean, that would I be know. my thing. It's like, uh, I know what my, I want my mascot to be. And, yeah, and yeah. Let's see if we figure it out. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, say it again, Liberty. Liberty, Intelligence, Our Nation's Safety. So L-I-O-N-S. Okay, so those are the three things. Liberty, Intelligence, Our Nation's Safety. Interesting. And so that's obviously spread right. since we're at an in international yeah. realm. But, um, the mission has always stayed the same. Um, you know, we we take care of eyeglasses for for people in need. Uh, we have testing equipment at schools um, that we can give to schools to use, and um, and so many other things. Um, Vision testing. Yes, exactly. That, okay. For for kids, and, and I know as as a whole, our our international organization uh you know supports research um always continue to try to improve uh, research and products that are available for for those who mm -hmm. in need of in need of uh, vision correction right right so excuse me so you guys actually collect eyeglasses that's correct from like people can donate the eyeglasses and then what what do you do with them after you get them so we 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 do have the donation drop <laughs> drops and um i'm trying to remember where all where all they are i know we have i believe there's one at the post office but um like you can the always post call. office down to yes okay. and I, but i know you can always call and um contact you know me at at, the, at my office or anybody uh, within Lions Club, and they can we can let you know. Hey, here's or you can just drop it off in my office. You know, I've got I've got a bag of them right now. Okay. And so, but once we once we get those, basically, um, those are just used to uh, we we reuse the frames, um, can put the lenses in. You know, personalized, customized to whoever's uh, correcting those. Um, but we do a lot of different things. We don't just use use frames um, when it comes to vision. Uh, we do partner with a lot of the uh, optometrists here in town um, to to take care of those if if we have an applicant. So I guess I should back up. We we get the applications. We have applications, and those are things that those are applications that you can get from me or uh, any one of our Lions Club members. Okay. Um, and once we get those applications um, filled out and back to us, um, <clears throat> excuse me, we will review those, um, and we once we approve them, they go to an optometrist who will kind of get their vision check up, figure out what their prescription is, and then uh, we will. They'll get their their eyeglasses ordered, and then we'll um, you know we cover that cost, which I think is really important for um, especially with kids. Uh, yeah. you know, we don't we don't necessarily just just do kids. We, you know we don't uh, specialize or focus on one age group, mm -hmm. but I mean there's studies that have shown that that kids who are having vision problems that can read the you know, that can lead to struggles in reading and writing and and even arithmetic. Right. Well, I I I know someone who um, needed glasses, and um, it it was really holding this child back in school. 
And um, so, yeah, it, it it's a it's a definitely a need. Uh, so um, <clears throat> you 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 mentioned get in touch with you. Do you guys have like a Facebook page? We do or something. We do. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, we can put that information in the comment section because I, I'm wondering if people would be able to go to that Facebook page Absolutely. and leave a message there, Absolutely. ask some questions, and then someone's in charge of responding, I guess, oh, to yeah. that sort of stuff. Yes, we have, uh -huh. we have multiple people that have access to that. Um, it's Duncan Noon Lions Club okay. um, in, on Facebook. Uh, we, we also invite everybody to like and, and follow us mm -hmm. here, um, that kind of uh, there's a lot of other things that we do, and we, we're always putting uh, kind of updates out there on when that's going to be. But we also like to highlight, uh, you know, one thing that we that we focus on is we want to celebrate our students. We bring in mm -hmm. um, seniors from the Technology Center and Duncan to you know, to celebrate them, to learn more about them, and we like to highlight them on our page as well. Ah, very nice. So, do you guys have like um, are you one of the clubs that has like seniors come and eat uh, yes. lunch all, all all through the senior year? That's right. Kind yeah. of thing. Okay. Each month, uh -huh. each month we have I believe it's two and two, uh -huh. um, and they'll they'll come and and for the most part we get a really good response to that. Uh, we we see most of our students uh, every every week that we meet, and uh, even our third meeting of the month we invite their. We'll invite their family every every meal, but that third meeting of the month is when we really like to highlight them, and we ask them we ask them very it's not an interview, but we we like to get to know them a little better, and we'll get them up there and ask them questions. Right, that's that's awesome. So, um, how often does the the Noon Lions Club meet? We meet every Thursday okay. at noon. Oh. At noon, Hence I know the that. name. I bet. <laughs> So a little, a little bit about the, the noon part of the Lions Club is we used to have two chapters. Okay. And so that's where the Duncan Noon Lions Club, when I first got here, I was like, I didn't know if that was, I remember like high noon. I was like, right, is this kind of a gitchy kind yeah, of right, thing? Yeah. Or, but yeah. no, we did have two chapters. I want to say the other chapter met in the morning. Oh, yeah. uh, or in the evening, one of the two. But right, no, you know what? I'm pretty sure it was like an early morning mm -hmm. group that met. And so thinking. people like me decided they wanted to meet at noon. Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, non morning and people. People who need a little more time in the mornings to get around. And as over time, we've just kind of kept the name. And it's just, I think it's only, I mean, it is only chapter. It's the only active now. chapter. That's right. right now. Here in Duncan. Yeah. Yes. And um, so besides, you know, honoring. A high school and technology seniors. Um, is there are, is there another way you guys support students? We do absolutely. So we have we have four scholarships that we award every year. We have two that go to uh, seniors at Duncan High School, and then we also have two that go to uh, our Red River Technology Center students that are seniors, and that could go to um, any any. Um, education after after uh, they graduate. And so how do do students need to apply for those scholarships or how, that, how's that done? Yes, you do. And, and a lot of those are chosen from our students of the month that I was just mentioning mm -hmm. that we highlight. Um, but yeah, that is, a, that is an application. I, I wanna say that is a, I can't remember if that's a requirement or not, but um, but we do have the application, and that's usually at the at the guidance counselor's office, right? At the school. school, yeah, and and at the technology center. Okay, right. So, um, uh, I was I was thinking earlier. You know, you, the initial mission it seemed like by from Helen Keller, the challenge was to help the blind. Do you guys ever do anything with the um, Duncan Council for the Blind? You know that's that's really interesting that you you asked that. I mean, we don't, but uh, at this point, at least not actively. I mean, we don't co uh, collaborate a lot of times. Uh -huh. uh, but that might be something that I need to reach out and and maybe we can work together on that. That's right. a great question. I know that they they are pretty active. Oh yeah. You know they're they're pretty well organized and. When I, well, you were um, at the Leadership and oh, Social yes. Services Day, and, you know, there are just so many um, needs that blind people, that people who are not blind, we do not even think 
about some of the needs that people with vision impairment have. Oh, and, you know, I always think about crossing Highway 81 there at Fuquay Park. Mm -hmm. um, and just uh, I, because I've heard that need mentioned so many times, you know, a, a voice, a voice activated light or a crossing thing because they just have to go for it that, that's right. and hope they hear the cars coming. And um, every time I think about that, I'm just kind of blows my mind. But anyway, I hadn't I didn't realize that that was kind of a historical focus for the Lions Club. And so I just thought I'd I'd ask about that. That's a great question. I'm going to follow up on that and, and see if there's some things that maybe we can work together on. And, um, you know, maybe there are some things that I just don't realize mm -hmm. that we kind of do together. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, if you think about it, it's like, I mean, I have contacts in, but if I don't have these in or my glasses, uh, I can't imagine. I mean, right. I, I can't drive. Right. And my wife can't either. I have but, often thought, <laughs> just since... Um, you know, mine is an age-related thing. You know how that what happens. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, your eyes get older. You have a little trouble focusing. But I can't tell you how many times I've thought if something happened to my glasses and I was off somewhere and I needed to read something, I could not, I would not be able to read it. I mean, I would have to have the help of someone yeah. to help me read if the print was too small, if I couldn't get it out far enough, you know, I, I would not be able to read it. And it's just if you if you kind of imagine yourself in a situation like that, it's disturbing, you know, and just thinking about vision just in general. That's just like trying to read something, you know, but anyway, um, so as far as like a a um a part of the community um i mean you guys i'm guessing if it's an international organization i'm going to give go away from the community thing for a minute if it's an international organization do you um i'm are you, are there dues like if people were going to try to join the lions club what what would that look like yeah, we do, have, we do have dues, and I think they've changed. I don't know exactly how much it is, but it's pretty affordable. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, the dues, and they go to, like I mentioned earlier, our, our international organization, um, partly. Um, they also go to, you know, us, keep it, keep it local. Um, right. And, and we, that we do some things. Yeah, that's why I wonder if there was like a, a local, state, national, international, like how far does, who, does, does everybody get a little bit of that? Or? Yeah. Um, prim primarily the community, um, there's a small bit that goes to the international organization just to kind of maintain, administrate, and, and to support some of our objectives as a, as a Lions Club International. Um, but at the same time, a lot of it goes to local and and we also have our fundraising, which we haven't, haven't talked right. about yet, but, right. but that's a big part of um what funds our opportunities to do the scholarships every year mm -hmm. uh, well, and the eyeglass app. so you guys meet for lunch we do every week um do people do people pay for their lunch every week too or would that be included in the dues if we we do we do have um, our our food costs you don't have to be a part of that like if you don't you know if you're not a noon lunch person you, you okay. can be there and if you if you just want to be there as a guest um, you know i'm speaking to everybody out there is is you're more than welcome to come and be a guest we always 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 welcome anybody to come see what our meetings are about um kind of who we are as a club and your honored guest anytime uh we'll we'll cover lunch we just we would love to have people there from the community learning about what we do right right um so um <clears throat> yeah um so fundraising yes whenever you guys fundraise are you able to keep all of that for your local organization exactly that's that's where the the not only the scholarships but the uh, a lot of the eyeglass stuff that we do and and every now and then we will uh, we will uh, support other local uh, organizations or or uh, missions really like for example um, we just gave a donation to um, uh, imagination library 
Oh, uh, the, the, the initiative that the Dolly part. Uh, yes, uh -huh. yes, Kelly Jeffrey. Yeah, um, yeah. Nancy Bowling and um, Judy Judy Dittner. Uh -huh. They're they're kind of headlining there and uh, working to provide that for our community, which is fantastic. Right. And so, yeah. um, not a lot, but when we see those kind of one time uh, things that we will. Um, jump in and, and maybe pitch in, but primarily our eyeglasses and uh, scholarships. Yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> so um, about how many pairs of glasses are you guys able to um, assist with each year? That's a great question. Um, as far as how many we can, I mean, I don't know like a max number. It really, what it comes out to about an average of 40 a year that we do assist okay. with and help with. But I mean, our capacity is more, um, but that's about how much we do every year. Okay. And we're always welcoming um, people to apply. Uh -huh. um, I know it's uh, a lot of times they have a hard time, especially um, parents um, applying for their kids. Um, there's a certain there's a certain stigma involved, uh, unfortunately, that we place as a society on um, help. And and when when you're going through a hard time, there's a lot of pride involved, and and we like to eliminate that. And we don't want that to be a barrier for people. If if uh, you see a, a need uh, for a child or yourself for eyeglass applications, we really encourage you to to put in an application, let us see if we can help you. And because um, that's what that's what, that's what being a, a community is about. Right. And I love that about Duncan is that they do prioritize community involvement and being together as a community. So are there some like strict um, financial parameters or are you guys able to decide on a case by case basis as an organization? We do, we do decide on a, on a case by case basis. Uh, or uh, case by case uh, basis. Uh -huh. So we we just look at the application and and you know just make sure that there's you know no concern there. Right. If, if there's a true need, it's going to be obvious, and and we we're more than happy to assist. Well, I th I think that's important to mention because someone may know someone or be someone who finds themselves in a a very unusual. Um, but very um, uh, trying financial situation just that's out of the norm. Sure. And sure. Um, and their kids, you know, run over their glasses with their bicycle or whatever, you know, right. or sit on them or something. And, and they they need to have a new pair of glasses or maybe they just their kids need some glasses. And so uh, that's why I was wondering if, you know, just that a one-time situation would be something you guys would be able to consider. I'm trying to remember, our, we have a committee that looks at those mm -hmm. and I, I don't think there's anything like specific mm -hmm. that we look at as far as criteria, but but it is a case by case. Mm -hmm. largely. Well, that's, that's awesome. That's encouraging. Um, I think that would maybe give people a little more confidence that, you know, going through that process and applying, um, that maybe there would be that opportunity. And the fact that you guys help 40 purchase 40 pairs of glasses, but that you actually have the finances that you could do more. Yes. Um, that means that there are opportunities there. So if you know someone, look up the Lions Club and That's contact right. them because I think that that might be a good a good answer for someone who has that kind of a need. Absolutely. Um, so um, tell us about your fundraising okay. that you guys do. So we have one, our one big fundraiser that we do every year that we like to push out to the community and, and, and encourage everyone to come is June 22nd through the 24th. It's always going to be right around there every year, but this year it is the 22nd through the 24th. We have our Duncan Noon Lions Club Rodeo. Uh -huh. So that's three nights of uh, all the rodeo activities. Uh, we've got a concession stand, but we also are going to have two food trucks. And uh, ultimately, it's just a really good experience. Uh, every year, we, when we get on the radio and promote this. Uh, Edie, it really comes down to it's a family atmosphere. Um, there's not a lot of things you can go to anymore with your kids. 
And thankfully, what you guys do here is one of those, mm -hmm. um, but that you can go to and know that it's a family-friendly atmosphere, truly family-friendly. Mm -hmm. And that's what we uh, tout with our rodeo is it's a great activity for everybody from 2 to 92. And we have a blast. Um, last year, we had, <laughs> interestingly enough, we had some uh, gentlemen from France, from the country, who happened to be at Fort Sill and... I believe one of them was really interested in rodeos and they went to uh, maybe Crutchers and Lawton and they're like, you know, where can we go to a rodeo? And they pointed, they pointed them to Duncan. And so we got to be their first rodeo experience. Yeah, and right. and uh, in my very broken French, I got to uh, do my best to communicate with them. We gave them a tour uh, of the announcers uh, booth upstairs and, and the, uh, Oh, Dwight and Donna Frick gave them a tour of the rough stock and, and the bucking stock. Got, a, got them uh, in there right up next to the, the big bucking bulls. And I think they had a really good time. Uh, but it, that's just proof that this is for literally everybody yeah, out there. Yeah. So And now they can say, this is my first road. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so uh, you have this three-day rodeo event and um is it like are there are there is there prize money or prizes given at this rodeo is it kind of a part of like the rodeo circuit it, kind of things or it is just like a lot of the other rodeos there are added money um in whether whether okay. you're um whether you're doing the roping or the um a lot of times the bulls um the bull riding you're doing you got added money involved and that varies from year to year um, but yeah we've got the um, the breakaway roping you got barrel racing uh, we've got the uh, the different roping team roping and steer uh, I don't think we've got the steer wrestling at least not not in the past uh -huh. but I know they're always looking to kind of change some things up uh -huh. and um, but do you do one of those little kid things where they that's funny you it's funny you <laughs> ask that we we haven't but like I said, we were always looking to improve. And okay. if we had enough people that were interested in doing that, their kids, um, you know, it's always something maybe we can. Mutton bust. Something like they tie a, something on a, somebody's oh, tail. We do, we do the calf scramble. Okay, yes. the calf kids, scramble. that's always, we do the uh, nickel. It's always entertaining to watch. Right. <laughs> We do the nickel toss as well for the younger kids where we just kind of toss out the nickels behind them. And then they, when we say go, they just, all these little two to five-year-olds just run out there trying to find the nickels. Um, and I've seen uh, Donna, Donna Frick reach around and give a couple of those really young kids, a, you know, a $5 bill or something. So she might with my ear for telling everybody that but that's just how much she loves uh, the kids being out there yeah. and but yeah we do the calf scramble where and that that's worth the price of admission honestly <laughs> sure. you see these kids that are running out there and and uh see a kid that's probably never been around a calf before uh -huh. you find out how tough they are real quick yeah. and yeah. some surprise you they'll show up with that you know with a bro uh not a broken eye but a but a, a black eye and yeah. uh but they've got it, you know, yeah. they're they're there for the money, but it's just, it just goes back to being a family fun event, uh, Thursday through Saturday. And we also have the rodeo Queens. If that's something that any of our, um, young listeners are, are interested in is you can be a rodeo queen and you sell tickets. And, and then we always have a, uh, we have candidates and then we have a, have a winner every year. And, and we as a part of that, if, if you win as a rodeo queen for us, we have a trailer that, oh, nice. that they win. So, nice. Very nice trailers. Um, so is that uh, the winning queen? Is that based on ticket sales? Yes. Okay. Yes. So uh, it's, all, it's based on the, the ticket sales. Um, and so if you see, you know, here in probably the next month or so, you're probably really going to see some of our candidates out and about in the community. Um, kind of getting ready to make those sales and, and ask if you want like to donate mm -hmm. uh, but we, we couldn't do that without the queens uh, right. they, they really hustle out there last year was incredible we had several that were just really working hard and, and you hate it you wish you could you know give and, and they're second place prizes but I mean the way they hustled you wish we could have given a trailer to you for every one of them right. um, and so what do you know the ticket prices um I 
don't. Okay. I, and I don't want to say a number because it might right. be wrong, but right. 10, yeah. to, well, 10 sounded about right. 10-ish. Yeah. We're going to say ten ish, ish yeah. on that. So don't hold him to it. Just That's right. Yeah, don't don't come at me with knives and pitchforks. <laughs> um, but it, it, at the end of the day, though, I mean, like I said, we're with the way prices have gone up on everything nowadays, it's, you know, you can get in and I want to I'm trying to remember at what point your kids under a certain age can get in free. We'll, we'll have a lot of like promotional right. material that you'll be able to see to know that. And but I'm sure your Facebook page will. Absolutely. Yes. If you follow our, if I can follow our Facebook page, we will have all of that there. And um, it's, it's just a great night and it's affordable. I mean, I think that's what we really, we really enjoy about it too, is that it's family friendly and you're not breaking the bank and you have a good time. So does the, is the concession stand, is that run by um, the Lions Club or do you guys have other organizations who run the concession and get to make money off we, of that? We do run that, okay, you guys uh, run but, but we couldn't do it without volunteers. Right. Um, we, we kind of tap into our other, the rest of our community who, who volunteer their time and effort, um, mm -hmm. whether that's co-workers of mine or co-workers from um, other institutions and other other companies we all pitch in together um, okay. and then the, the food trucks are not ours so that, those are but they're local food trucks normally that um, I think we're working on getting another one but um, the Mexican food truck that's always there and I'm failing the name but there you see them all over town and, okay. and uh, it's great to have at least one one local food truck for sure for sure so um <clears throat> now kind of like what I was thinking earlier um why did you choose Lions Club there are a lot of civic organizations yeah. like that like the Lions Club that you know raise money, give it back to the community, support students, all of those things. But why Lions Club for you, Dylan? You know, that's a great question because there's, I have two answers to that because initially when I got into Lions Club, um, I guess it's really one answer, but for two different situations, but it was the people. Mm -hmm. um, the people that were in the Lions Club chapter that I joined in Chickasha, um, very welcoming in my time there as a guest and it kind of became something I looked forward to when I finally had the opportunity. Um, I, I guess I was there for a couple of months for a, a working on a project a few years before I ended up there. And so I was there as a guest. And then when I returned working full time on Chickasha, that was really when um, it was a no brainer for me to join Lions Club. And then um, when I got the opportunity to join the team at First Bank and Trust, it was the same way. The people there at Lions Club and uh, really have always just impressed me with their character and the uh, the willingness that they have to to be a part of uh, something bigger than themselves. Right, right. And so, um, what it what do you think is the Lions Club like? Their what is your biggest impact in Duncan? How, how do you see you guys like really leaving a mark here in Duncan? You know, that's a great question. I think really at the end of the day, I mean, it goes back to our initial, our, our mission when it comes to the blindness and mm -hmm. um, and, and fighting that and, and providing people with resources to be able to see. Um, we get, I think what makes it worth it for us, whether that really leaves a huge impact as far as from a, from a quantity standpoint, but the thank, the thank you cards that we get, people who come back yeah. that, you know, the you go back to the Bible and see the, the lepers that were healed. And there was the one that came back to thank Jesus. And I think that is, um, that is the quality that we, when we see a lot of these people are just very thankful mm -hmm. and that all, I mean, to me, that, that alone is worth whatever we go through the, the nights at the rodeo being done at 1 AM and, and, you know, try to stay awake the next day. Mm -hmm. uh, it's all worth it because right. of that. Right. And it's not just that feeling of gratification. It's knowing that you did something really worthwhile that changed someone's life and encourages you to keep going. That's right. That's what I, th I think, uh, you know, those kinds of thank yous. That's what I always um, take away from that. That just encourages me to just, you know, dig in and go again, go do Absolutely. something else. So, um, well, I, I tell you, I'm um, Duncan has a lot of really 
committed business people who go who, who do more than just make their money and spend it here in town you know um when you like when a group like the lions club just commits to support special interests you know and um <clears throat> provides not just a fundraiser but a family friendly fundraising event that provides entertainment it's an annual event everyone looks forward to it yes. you know you say the lions club rodeo everybody knows right. what you're talking about and do you guys is it indoors now or is it outdoors it's, at, it's at the claude gill arena that's the okay, one on, that, on the south side okay that's where i thought it always was but i wasn't sure now that they have the big indoor arena there's something about sitting outside yeah, it's a too. true rodeo atmosphere, but and I don't want to take away from other clubs. I mean, and especially here yeah. in Duncan, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, the we were talking about the fact that we can have a fundraiser that's for families. I mean, you know, think about Kitty Land, right? Exactly. I mean, that yeah. they have that that option, and and Rotary does so much for the community, and I don't want to take away from those organizations either because they have the same type of people. Exactly. Um, yeah. and then, it's just that I mean. There are so many different needs. I just, I'm so glad that Duncan has all these different organizations and nobody's stepping on anyone's toes. Everyone is, there's, there are more needs than we have the ability to cover. 100%. And so every single thing that organizations do, and I mean, I just think it's important for people to volunteer. I think that volunteerism is just one of the, um, one of the best things that anyone can do and it, anybody can volunteer to help at any level. Yes. You know, you can teach your kids when they're really little to just go and volunteer and do stuff. And you can volunteer for a long, long time in your mm -hmm. life. And it can look different every year, you know? Sure. Um, and so I, I, I would just appreciate um people involved in businesses who are uh, members of the Lions Club and what you guys do thank for you. our community. Yeah, thank you, Dylan. I appreciate you being here. Um, so guys, put that on your calendar, June the 22nd through the 24th. If you know someone who needs some help with some glasses, there's no age restriction on that. Fill, find out how to fill out an application. Dylan works at First Bank and Trust. So if you wanna get in touch with him, I'm sure he would be glad to answer any Absolutely. questions that you have. And um, thank you so much for joining us today. Speaking of putting dates on your calendar, a week from Saturday, um, which is April the 8th, we are having Raining in the Arts market calendar. It's going to be from 10 to 5. The museum will be free, and we are going to have performers all day long. Oh, wow. I mean, we're going to have musicians and dancers and um we're going to have visual artists with their pieces here in the museum for sale. You'll be able to tour the museum. It's, it's going to be a super fun day. So come and come and hang out with us. Hopefully the weather will be a little nicer than it is today. We won't complain about the rain. We will not complain about Hopefully the rain. Hopefully it is autumn. We'll just like rain the day before, That's rain right. the day after, <laughs> rain the morning before or the night after, just not <laughs> from 10 to 5. That's what we watch. So anyway, when we get out, go off, we always say happy trails. Oh. So are you ready? I'm ready. All right. I'm ready. Thanks for watching today. Happy, happy trails. trails.